um, talk a little bit about how can ADHD impact a young adult and their parents? And I have to admit, this is very dear to my heart because I am a parent of an adult now. Uh, I would like to keep calling him a young adult, but he's in, <laughs> he passed 30. And I think that that's an adult life there, still young, but an adult. So um, I want to start by sharing kind of how is this look as an impact on a young adult first? Um, similar to how um, in the parent-child relationship, there is some uh, challenges with academics and, and relationships and things like that, with a young adult uh, is going to intensify a little bit more for them and for the parents because their challenges, now they're responsible of being the ones doing something different. We parents have no uh, control on uh, making them, or even when we suggest something for them to do, it's not going to happen that way. So the, the, the parent is going to have a big challenge um, understanding where wh what is my role here and where is my boundary as I'm raising this young adult. Um, but for them first, for the, the impact on a young adult is going to be academic challenges. And depending on what, what they want to do, if they want to go to college, if they want to have go to a trade school, whatever they want to do, those academic challenges are going to be there. And they're going to struggle with organization, with maintaining focus, with the... Um, their thought process, controlling their constant thinking, their completing assignments, um, meeting deadlines. These are going to be a big challenge uh, for them. And if we didn't teach these skills when they were children, now as a young adult starting college, this is more difficult because they don't have those executive skills to perform at the college level when everybody's gonna expect them and they don't wanna have the support system of the parents telling them what they need to do and how they need to do it or reminding them. Um, so academic challenges is one of those areas that is gonna be their ADHD is gonna impact uh, um, that young adult. Another challenge is going to be work. From work, um, thinking here about is going to have some uh, work performance issues that might come up in the workforce for them. And that could be that they're having problems maintaining their attention when they are in meetings, for example. Um, meetings are is one of the things that in my experience I have seen with my clients that they have more challenges because these meetings that are over 20 minutes long they, they're gone, their brain is gone, they're bored, they're not putting any attention and information is given and they sometimes lose valuable and important information that is shared in those meetings and that causes a problem for them at work. Um, they can have problems with showing up on time at work. They can have problems uh, performing a task, a project on a timely manner as is expected of them. So work performance is also a challenge that a young adult starts experiences when they get in the workforce. They also experience relationship and social challenges, forming and maintaining relationships with others. Depending again uh, on their level and how they are socially relating to other individuals, um, if, if they don't know how to maintain those interactions and those social uh, relationships, it can cause a problem for them. They might not even know how to read cues at times in a conversation. They might not able to keep up in a conversation because after 10 minutes or 15, they're bored of the conversation. So they're, they're, they're interrupting with other thoughts and ideas that comes to mind for them. Um, they could have challenges with impulse control and that could manifest in different ways, like talking out of place, saying inappropriate jokes, 
uh, and, uh, and I'm sharing the inappropriate jokes because that's something that I had a lot of experience with some of my clients that when they they were very impulsive and when they were in difficult situations, they started saying jokes and they didn't realize that sometimes the jokes were very inappropriate and they got in trouble at work because that the type of jokes that they were saying, or they will send an email uh, with a funny uh, story of something and it was totally inappropriate to do that at the workforce. So again, uh, challenges at work is another area that gets impacted by indiv uh, individuals with ADHD that are young adults. Um, relationships and social challenges. And then there's the emotional and the mental health issues that it comes up. By this time as a young adult, if their ADHD has not been treated and managed, there are going to be a lot of other emotional challenges that are going to show up could be anxiety, could be depression. Um, those are the most common ones, but could um, also be some more of the bipolar type as well showing up. It depends if the person was not treated, uh, like substance abuse issues can also show up at that time. Again, if they were not treated as a younger age and made aware of their ADHD. So as a young person, um, regulating uh, those, those emotions and managing their mental health is very, very important. So this is an area of a challenge that we need to be aware that happens and affects their daily life as, as well as their self-esteem. Another area that is affected for individuals with young adults is that impulsivity and risk-taking behavior that tends to happen for a young adult at times. And, and I'm going to say that this is going to vary again by age, but I see this happening more between the ages of 18 to kind of like 24, 25, where there is that freedom of I'm responsible for me, which is exciting and it's really good, is that also brings a lot of fear and they don't know how to make the best decision for themselves. So they are exposed to a lot more that uh, and having a lot more freedom to decide on their own. So maybe they go to substances quicker than is expected when they don't have anyone monitoring them and talking to them about it. Uh, they might um, be more impulsive in really doing some risky behaviors uh, as they decide that they're gonna have a motorcycle and they're gonna be riding a motorcycle now. Uh, or, or And I'm not saying that it's wrong and it's bad and that's dangerous. I'm saying that they might make take decisions in a more impulsive manner than thinking it through and knowing is this is what I need to do for me right now. Uh, so that's also how ADHD impacts young adults, especially when there has not been any treatment for them. So I wanna also make that comment again. Now, how does this look for the parent of that young adult that now is more independent? Well, there's a lot of added stress for the parent here because the, the emotional demands on the parents uh, are more intensified uh, because they feel their kid's going to need probably more supervision and still need supervision, but they're not ready yet to, to, to accept it and they don't want it. So the parent is struggling to what level of supervision uh, the parent is struggling to seeing how am I going to manage these behavioral challenges that they're exhibiting right now that they're noticing, or if, because if they're still living at home, then it's also about I'm noticing the struggle academically and I'm not the person that can go and talk to the school and ask for accommodations or uh, extra time. They have to be the one advocating for themselves. And if this was not thought to them when they were younger. So now is the bigger challenge for the parents. So this is an added stress on parents. The parent-child relationship also, if we don't have a, a good communication, then is very strained. 
And what happens here is that the parents having the challenge to communicate, the, the, the person is going to hear as you come in to tell me what to do instead of having a conversation with me. So they're going to be very defensive if whatever comes out of our mouth is about you telling me what to do and I'm not going to do it. So how a parent learns to, how do I manage this? How do I stop for a moment and notice the situation with my child and let them know this is happening and we need to do something different right now? Um, it makes it very difficult for a parent. So that parent-child relationship can be affected as well. This is a financial burden for families as well, for parents. Um, and it's a financial burden because if they are not going to school, for example, and you know they graduated from high school, they're at home, they're not working, and they still have bills to pay for them, cell phones, if they have other expensive car insurance, things like that. You know, the parents are expecting them like, okay, what else are you going to do? And if the person is not ready yet to really go outside in the workforce to go and do something, then the parents find like, what, what else can I do here? Uh, one of the things that I see as a financial burden for families is when they call me is about finding the services for their kids. Because if they, for some reason, the family are not able to have them in their insurance, um, then it's limited the services that they can find for their kids besides having therapy, which is important and having kind of like seeing a doctor for their medication management if they are uh, receiving those services. But the parents will tell me anything else is out of pocket and they might not be able to afford it at that time. So there is a lot that comes with uh, having your child become a young adult and do financial responsibilities for, for that person. And I'm using the scenario of them not working or you know staying at home and things like that. But the financial burden is, it, it goes beyond that. They could be at college and you are supporting them also to go to college and things like, and they're not performing to the level and they might get kicked out of college. So that is part of that financial burden that the parents have. Um, so there's a lot that, um, that affects the parents. Like for example, maybe a parent have to take time out from work. That is a financial burden. If I get paid by the hour, or if I have to use all my uh, personal leave, then, you know, to attend for my child's uh, needs at that moment, that is also an impact on that parent. Um, another one that I see is advocacy and support. Parents not necessarily are looking for themselves to get the advocacy and the support that they need. And that's why I always said from a very young age, at the moment that your child is diagnosed, you need to start learning to advocate for yourself and educating yourself. So you teach that to your child. When they become a young adult, then you need to say, what else is out there that I can let my child know? These are other services for young adults that you can go for, that you can apply for, that you can uh request in college, whatever it is that they need. So getting that information and hopefully getting it before they graduate from high school so you can tell them what they can do when they go to college. Uh, but if that didn't happen at that time and they're in college or they're working, but you're still having a lot of challenges with them, is to ask your child what, what other uh, support system you have out there? What what else did you know? But parents do need to find that place of how do you learn more about advocacy and support for you as a parent of a young adult? And then there's that emotional impact as well. And that emotional impact goes back to kind of like the, the parent-child relationship and how it's affected because sometimes there's a lot of guilt there's a lot of guilt for the parent. Uh, we, we're supposed to provide for them. We see their, their challenges that they're facing. And, you know, 
we want to keep doing. So that emotional impact is draining. It, it gets really tiresome for parents. So it's important that we find out what else can I do for me? That's what I go back to that support system. But I also have to find out that how can I continue to help my child as an adult? And, and that's going to take me a little bit here to be talking about what kind of strategies um, you we can have for young adults. Strategies for, for and suggestions and idea for young adult. Uh, um, for me, it starts back to, I said it again, and there's some things that I'm going to keep repeating is communication, communication and communication. And I'm going to add in here that this is not only for this young adult. If we look long term and we want to have a good relationship with this individual as they get older and older, and we, we really have to have a good communication. But that means as parents, we have to listen. And at this moment, I'm going to say this. This is when I emphasize parents learn how to listen. Because every one of my young adults clients, what I hear from them is they don't listen to me. They just tell me what they want me to do. They criticize me, but they don't listen to me. So, and the challenge with that is this, that because as parents, we're not listening, we're missing the opportunity of understanding how they see their challenge, the problem, and how we can help them identify the way, the solution that they believe is what's going to work for them. We miss the opportunity of seeing your kid really grow up and tell us what they believe is going to help them. And they also lose, they lose the trust on themselves because by not having the opportunity of saying how they could solve a situation, they start doubting themselves by not having the opportunity to put in place a strategy, an idea, they doubt themselves. So we have to be, we're the safe place for them. Or we should be that safe place for them to really um, help them to find out what is it that they're gonna do to help themselves and give them the opportunity to do it. Even if I think that what they're saying it's not going to work. Even if I think that by my experience, I think that sounds silly or I will not do it that way. Well, that's my opinion. Maybe works for them. So let's give them the opportunity to try it. And if it doesn't work, then we said, okay, we give it a try. We don't have to rehash that. Why did it work? No, we give it a try. What do you want to do different now? Again, it's not about judging them. It's about teaching them how they can problem solve. So you see the importance is here about communication and us parents listening to them. This is really important. And I can talk a lot about this, but I'm um, going to leave that for another time. Another strategy that I want to bring up again is the goes back to establishing the, the structures and routines and expectations. As young adults, we parents have to let our kids know what we expect of them. You know, it's like if you're still living at home and you're an adult and I know that you can be out and do whatever you want to, but I'm going to be worried at home. So in my house, I really need you to be by in the house by 2 a.m. If you're out of the house at 2 a.m., you know what, stay out and find a, don't come home until the next morning. Don't wake me up. Uh, whatever is your rule. But if you have a rule when you want your child to be home, you need to let them know and have that conversation and explain how come this is important to you. For me is, I don't want to lose sleep. I know I'm going to be up. So I said, listen, let's be fair. I'm going to be up and I'm going to be worried. So what time are you going to come home? And let's negotiate. Let's talk about it. 
I always did that with my son. So I think that it works if you just listen to what they're telling you. Oh, ask the questions. Where are you going to be? Give me the information that I need. How can I get a hold of you if I need you to? And if you don't mind that they come in at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., that's fine. But again, it goes back to you need to set up very clear expectations and you need to bring them up. You need to manage that. The same with chores at home. I do believe in chores. You're going to have different people having a different ideas about chores. And I see chores as family responsibilities. We are all part of the family. So I do want us to collaborate together. So as part of the family, I need you to do your dishes. Or oh, I need you to be in charge of your bathroom. You know, I will respect your room, but because the room is part of the house, I want to make sure that there's no food in there. There's nothing in there. I don't know. Whatever it is for you, you need to let them know and you need to set up that expectations. Um, just because they are adults, that does not mean that you just, they, they have free will of doing whatever they want to. It's still your house. You're still the parents. You set up your rules for that. And if they don't like it, they have something to say, that's the part of the conversation. Another strategy here is to teach and encourage organizational skills. To teach them is by asking them to the young adult. When you, and I'm gonna give you this example. Um, and it's funny because my son is older, but um, when we were living together again during the COVID time and all that, uh, I remember one time saying to him, please go and clean the kitchen. And I left it at that. And I went to the kitchen. The kitchen was not clean. And then I called him and I said, do you haven't cleaned the kitchen? He said, what do you mean? I did the kitchen. And at that moment, honestly, and I know a lot about ADHD, right? So at that moment, it just done on me. It's like, I said, go and clean the kitchen. And even though he's an adult and he knows a lot of what I mean in the kitchen, for the first time I realized what I mean by cleaning the kitchen that is countertops, that is the island, that is the stove, that is everything, everything for me. For him, cleaning the kitchen means the sink and the dishes and the plates and putting everything up, nothing else. And for the first time I stood there and I'm like, hmm, here it is. The proof of saying clearly what you mean, making sure they understand and they know what is your expectation of them. So I taught him that for me in my house, this is what I mean by cleaning the kitchen. And even that he lived always in my house when he was growing up, um, it was interesting because I realized I was the one in charge of the kitchen because I know how Anal I am about the, my kitchen. So saying that, it's just telling you that it is important that we encourage them and we ask the questions and we teach them what is it that we mean. Teach them how to create to-do lists. If they tell you that they have a lot of things to do, just sit down with them and ask them, how can I help you? Let's brainstorm about strategies. Can you create a to-do list for you? How do you, where do you want to have this to-do list? How do you want to use the to-do list? You know, and encourage them to learn how to organize themselves, to find what works for them. The other thing is about if they're going to college is how do you create a supportive study and work and habits at home now that they're going to college? Are they living at home and they're coming back? Do you... Do they want you to ask them questions if they are living at college? Or like in one of my family members, the child is coming back from college now, graduated, but he's going to start the medical school. And the whole conversation was, how are we going to do this? Um, he's, what does he need? Because for four years he was gone. So what is it that he needs at home? in order to study and all this whole conversation about how to set up everything now that he's coming back home, especially when the parents kind of like were empty nester, it's a whole conversation there because it's different. Um, so I'm giving you a, this as an example of the importance of having this conversation with your young adult. You also want to explore with your young adult, what are the treatment options for them? 
If they're in treatment good, is that working for them? Do they have to do anything different? If they're not in receiving any treatment for their ADHD, what do they need? And ask them and encourage them to look for that and ask if you need to assist. An important part that I'm telling all the parents in here is about you don't have to do things for them unless they ask you to help. So here it is, how do we teach our children, our young adults to ask for the help that they need? And then we negotiate if I'm able to do it or not. So that's another part about exploring for treatment and asking them what is it that you need and how are you gonna go about uh, getting the treatment that is best for you. Uh, foster independence and self-advocacy. And you foster independence by letting them take the adult, the responsibilities that they need as an adult. Let them, if they fail, it's okay. Let them fail. You be there to support them and to see a way on how they can make it, uh, they can make things better for themselves or you ask them how you need to help them. Okay, what is it that you can do for them? But let them experience failure is good for them. Let them be, be responsible for their decision and experience and have the opportunity to make their own decisions and see how that works for them. Okay, it's important that when we tell our kid, this is what we want for you, whatever it is, this is what we want, then make sure, is there a plan of action for them to do it? Don't just say things out of, your mouth like a parent said to their kids and it's another example is like okay uh you're not allowed to come back home until you have a b and c ready well they tell that to their kid a week before they were supposed to come back home uh back from college and it was like okay how is that supposed to happen in a week there were very high expectations that the parents have thought about it for a long time. We find out that later, but they never communicated it clear to that other person. They communicated some aspects. That's what I'm talking about. This communication is important about other hearing what we're saying and are we being clear? Can we do that reflective listening? You know, can we ask them to do reflective listening to us so to make sure that they understand what we said and expect of them? So this is really important that we foster independence, that we foster self-advocacy, but we also have to remember that we have to have that clear expectations for them to follow through. And we have to be the ones providing them with the opportunities to experience life as an adult and just being there as a support system for them. So this is a summary of um, what I'm saying right now as a young adult is, is an expectations is educate yourself, open communication, establish rules, structures, um, set clear expectations, Make sure that you have a place for them to do the work if they're coming back, they're going to college and coming back home. Explore treatment options for them and foster independence and self-advocate. Mm -hmm.